Tinybird has created a new way to develop APIs over your streaming data and data warehouses that are fast, low latency, and quick and easy to set up. You can also get started for free, so if you're interested already, click the link in the description and take a look. If you're not convinced yet, continue watching and I'll show you the power of Tinybird. Tinybird is a great tool used in lots of small and big startups and businesses. One of those businesses is Fursell. Behind the scenes, Fursell's analytics is entirely powered by Tinybird. So for the end user, they get their own real-time fast web analytics and for Fursell, they have to be able to actually handle all that analytical load off their users' websites. Let's stop squawking and actually get into Tinybird so I can show you what it can do. So to get started, all you need to do is head over to sign in or go to ui.tinybird.co. Once you head over here, you'll need to either create an account by signing up or you can sign in if you already have one. I'm going to click continue with Google to actually get started. Now, when you first come to Tinybird, you'll actually be uh, given a, um, a region to select. Now, select the region as most relevant to you. And once you've got that region selected, you'll be able to create a workspace. Let's just call this my, my first workspace. You can select a starter kit if you want to get into any of the kits they already have. However, we're going to start off an empty workspace for this. We're going to create a workspace and there you go. So as you can see, it actually tells you the step-by-step -step process of creating an API endpoint. It gives you a little walkthrough as well. You could skip this or you could follow this. The first thing after creating your workspace is actually to add some data to your workspace. So what we want to do is click add data and we can actually select some different ways of doing this. Now, one way you can do it is by either uploading a CSV or some sort of file, or you can use a remote URL. Now we can take in this um, stock prices data here, um, which they have already as a demo, which you can just copy this snippet, go to your command line and paste this in. Now, once you have pasted that in there, you'll see this has uh, gave you some sort of response. And now we should have a data set inside of our um, data sources. You can see here we have new data source. So now you have a data source in here. You can name this whatever you want. We could just leave it a data source or we can call this stocks. So the next step is to create a pipe. Now, a pipe is a, um, a series of uh, nodes made from SQL queries um, that each um, node after the previous node can actually reference the data from that node. So for example, if you create a node here, which gets you, let's say, the data from the top 10 stocks, um, and then you can then query those top 10 stocks in a separate node below and get the data only created from those uh, from this node, which is a really good way to keep your code uh, or your um, queries super clean and easy to read. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the top 10 stocks from the total trade volume and it's super easy. So in here we could just get the symbol um, and then we wanna get the sum, oh, come on. Uh, we're gonna get the sum of the volume and um, the trade under as the trade underscore volume from our stocks um, data source, and then we just want to say where to start off year date is equal to about 2007 of the first of the first, um, and then we're going to group by the symbol. and order by the trade volume uh, in descending order and then we're going to limit it to 10. So if we run this you'll see we get the top 10 uh, stocks uh, for their trade volume um, and we can rename this to something as simple as top 10 
trade volume and this is just one query querying our data now we can query the data we get from this in a separate node so what we want to do in here is actually just get um we want to basically just get the symbol um and the maximum high node from the call this the highest price from our stocks data source where our symbol in select symbol from and then we're going to get the data from this current one which will be our top 10 trade volume and then we'll group this we'll get the symbol from our stocks and order this by the highest price in descending order if we run this so if we run this you'll see we get this in order which is nice so you can see the highest is up here and it slowly goes down now what we could do with this is actually turn it in to an api endpoint so we want to call this the end point and what we're going to do is go up here and click create endpoint from the endpoint here and there you go. Now we have given ourselves an API endpoint when query. Now this gives you different ways you can query it in different scenarios. However, we could just use the HTTPS response, paste it in here and get the JSON data back here so you can see all the data being passed through, which is actually really useful. So that is how you set up an API endpoint with Tinybird. As you can see, it's super easy to use and really easy to set up, which makes this super fun and exciting to play with. Now you're probably wondering, well, that's really cool you could do it all inside of this ui but if you also are interested you can actually do this in the cli as well it's all documented on their site everything is here you can go from um, using the ui to actually using the cli um, to actually push your data to or publish your endpoints and move them to production so guys, don't forget to check out the description for all the links and things you need. Check out TinyBud. It's a super awesome platform and I highly recommend taking a look into it. It's super great, especially when you want to set up your own API endpoints. And that's going to be it for this video. So if you've enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out.